today I'm going to read, well, we'll read it together. If you want to follow along on the screen, we're going to read John chapter 9. Now as Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from birth. He and his disciples, and his disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi, who, has, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned, but that the works of God should be revealed in him. I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. <clears throat> when he had said these things, he spat on the ground and made clay and saliva, and he anointed his eyes, anointed the eyes of the blind man with clay. And he said to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is translated sent, so that he went and washed and came back seeing. Therefore the neighbors and those who previously had seen that he was blind said, Is not this he who sat and begged? Some said, This is he. Others said, He is like him. He said, I am he. Therefore they said to him, How were your eyes open? Jesus answered and said, a man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and said to me, Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. So he went. So I went and washed, and I received sight. Then they said to him, Where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought him who formerly was blind to the Pharisees. Now it was a Sabbath when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees who asked him again, then the Pharisees also asked him again how he had received his sight. He said to them, He put clay on my eyes, and I washed, and I see. Therefore some of the <clears throat> Pharisees said, This man is not from God because he does not keep the Sabbath. Others said, How can a man who is a sinner do such signs? And there was a division among them. They said, to the blind man again, What do you say about him because he opened his eyes? He said, He is a prophet. But the Jews did not believe concerning him that he had been blind and received his sight until they called the parents of him who had received his sight. And they asked him, asked them, saying, Is this your son who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parent answered, and said, we, we know that this is our son, and that he was born blind. But by what means he now says, we do not know. Or who opened his eyes, we do not know. He is of age, ask him. He will speak for himself. His parents said these things because they feared the Jews. For the Jews had agreed already that if anyone confessed that he was the Christ, he would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore his parents said, He is of age, ask him. So they again called the man who was blind and said to him, Give God the glory. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered and said, Whether he is a sinner or not, I do not know. One thing I know, that though I was blind, now I see. Then they said to him again, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered, I told you already and you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciple or his disciples? Then they reviled him and said, You are his disciple, but we are Moses' disciple. We know that God spoke to Moses. As for this fellow, we do not know where he is from. The man answered and said to them, Why, why this is a marvelous thing that you do not know where he is from. Yet he opened my eyes. Now we know that God does not hear sinners, but if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, he hears him. Since the world began, it has been unheard of that anyone opened the eyes of one who was born blind. If this man was not from God, not from God, he could do nothing. They answered and said to him, You were completely born in sins, and you are teaching us, and they cast him out. Jesus heard that they had cast him out, and when he found him, he said to him, Do you believe in the Son of God? 
He answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I may believe in him? And Jesus said, You have both seen him, and it is he who is talking to you. Then he said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. And Jesus said, For judgment I have come into this world, that those who do not see may see, and that those who see may be made blind. Then some of the Pharisees who were with him heard these words and said to him, Are we blind also? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you were not you would not have your, you would have no sin. But now you say we see, therefore your sin remains. Okay, folks, that's that's another good chapter of knocking that ridiculous challenge of Christ doctrine Don K. Preston invented based on John ten thirty seven. This goes over why Jesus did his uh, signs. Go back to verse 31. Now we know that God does not hear sinners, but if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, he hears him. These Pharisees and Jews wanted everyone to know we do the works of Moses. Jesus is doing the works of his father. They were not doing the works of Moses. They were just claiming they were. They were claiming, we see, we know who we are, and cast that blind man, it was blind, they cast him out of the synagogue. And, you know, Jesus is, that lay, he, he ends this chapter with, if you were blind, you would have no sin. If you didn't know what you were doing, you would they wouldn't be held accountable. But y'all say, we know what we do. We we uh, do. We are under Moses' law. Jesus said, "We see." Y'all say, "We see." He said, "Therefore, your sin remains." And then our next time we will get into chapter ten. But these first nine chapters make it so clear that Jesus came and He proved His deity. You know, and in verse 39, he says, For judgment I have come into this world. You remember previously, he said, I did not come to judge. <laughs> my father is the judge. But if I judge, my judgment will be righteous. That's not a contradiction for saying, For judgment I have come into this world. Because he explains it. Those who do not see may see and that those who see may be made blind. He came into the world. Okay, I'm bringing in the gospel. I am the Messiah. Those who believe in me will have eternal life. And those who think they have eternal life think they are uh, of God, but really are not. And deep down, they probably knew they were not of God they will be made blind because that's how the judgment works. Okay, if you're so stuck in your doctrine and in your your theology that is wrong, but it's wrong, but you are, you are so hard-headed you do not say the truth, then you will remain blind. And that's the doctrine of Christ versus the law of Moses. We are saved by grace through faith. We believe Jesus is the Son of God. And notice all of these chapters I've read. Nowhere does it even hint that these people have to wait till Jesus returns before they can believe in Him. Don K. Preston says, John 10, 37 says, if I do not do what I say I'm going to do, do not believe me. And then he goes on preaching the eighty seventy doctrine. No, these people believed who Jesus was when he came to earth 40, what, 41, 42 years before he was, uh, <clears throat> before he was returned, 40 years. Well, let me put it this way, 37 to 42 years. They would have to wait until Jesus returned before he was to believe him. That's what the Don K. Preston and his challenge of Christ doctrine is teaching. And it's it's actually ridiculous and why his followers 
will not challenge him on that. I don't know. But he refuses to read verse 37. And he's been doing that for almost five years. And that's why I started. I mean, it's good to read. I, you know, we need to read the, the Bible daily, every day. But I wanted to read on my YouTube channel, the book of John, proving that the Challenge of Christ doctrine Don K. Preston invented and built for himself, how foolish it is, how wrong it is. It's wrong-headed. It's stupid. Jesus came into the world. These people are believing him. That blind man who, who could now see, he believed Jesus. Jesus' disciples, they were believing him. Other people were following Jesus. They saw his miracles. They were believing him. John 20, remember, verse 30, those signs like he just did here with this blind man, those were done so that we would believe that he is the Messiah, the Son of God, and through his name we could have eternal life, the forgiveness of sins and eternal life. That's, that's why he did these things. He was about to be crucified, and he wouldn't, he wouldn't be around. They believe, you know, and those people, okay, let's, in Matthew 28, he told them, go and preach the gospel, baptizing them, making disciples of all nations. That's been going on since Jesus was crucified. One day he will return and he will gather his kingdom, present us to the Father. That's in 1 Corinthians 15. But okay, I've read uh, chapter 9 and next I'll read chapter 10. I, I'm not sure when I'll do it uh, tonight or, you know, I, I read. We all need to read every day. But whether I'll record a video tonight, I don't know. But I might. And I may read chapter 9, I mean chapter 10 tonight. So I thank you for listening to me this today. And I'll let you know when I've got chapter 10 read. And thank you for listening. And that's, I'll see you next time.